If you don't have cerulean blue, you could probably <coughs> use a little cobalt. Ultramarine might be a little bit too granular because ultramarine is a sedimentary color, and that wants to sit <coughs> in the little hollows of the texture. So, great for landscapes because, you know, it gives you that little sedimentary quality, but not so good when you're wanting a nice smooth surface. So, and I've got a little bit of that mixed up, and I'm going to wet my sky area <coughs> down. I'm using a nice large two inch wash brush. If you don't have one, I will borrow you mine, because if you've got a small brush, it's going to take longer to wet that whole sky area consistently. And that's what we want. We want a nice consistent yeah, the tree's there. I'm going to pretend that tree isn't there. I'm going to go right over it because maybe we want some of that sky color poking through some of the foliage of that tree. So notice how much water I'm putting on here. I've gone back and forth several times, haven't I? Because I want to have a nice consistent glazing of water. And if I don't go with my exact line, where my mountains are going to be, that's going to be okay. So before I put any color in, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to get all that extra moisture off because otherwise I might end up with a little backwash that it come, crawls in. It might happen anyway. We get what we get. So I'm going to go into the cerulean blue that I've already diluted. Now I could have just a plain blue sky and leave it like that. Or I can fun it up with some various values or different colors. And I'm gonna pretend that tree isn't there. So if I wanted that to stay nice and flat, I would just kind of manipulate the paint back and forth and just get it nice and nice and smoothed out. But I think I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush, a one inch brush, make sure it's clean, yep, and I'm going to grab a little bit of that, the old name was Tiziano Red, it's basically quinacridone coral, and I'm just going to float some of that in here. And that's going to be my sky. I'm just going to let that be. See how it kind of turned to purple in spots, stayed a little pinker in other spots. I'm just going to let that be. Now we're going to deal with the water. Wasn't that easy? You can all do that. Very easy. Very easy. So now I've got my cerulean blue here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to run my brush very perpendicular so I get kind of a dry brush area. I want to leave some white areas that like you see on those two examples. So I'm just going to kind of start in the middle. I'm going to see how the paint's reacting and, and dropping onto the paper. I'm just going to pay attention and see how that is floating in there. I like that. You're really not brushing it on like we would. Like no, I would if, if I have really my brush up like this, then it's going to flow off yeah, because of gravity. But if I hold it sideways, I'm just kind of skimming those upper levels of the texture of the paper. And then at some point, I might want it to be have a little bit more punch. So look at how different that was, just by lifting my brush up, how solid it went on there. That was cerulean blue? <laughs> yes, yep, that same cerulean blue that I had initially. And notice how I'm taking it into my land here. I'm gonna do that a little bit more. So let's get a little bit of some of this in. I'm going to kind of use this cerulean blue as my shadow areas for my grass. So it's kind of like an underpainting right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone there. So I'm going to, t well, I'm going to get my quinacridone coral a little bit more true. It turned a little bit purple with that mixture because it will commingle on its own. So let's just kind of sneak up on that as well because some of that that's reflecting right here would be mostly in this area. There's a little bit over here, but I need to thin that out more 
because it's thinner up in the sky. It's reflecting, it's mirroring what is up in the sky. Okay, and did you notice how the strokes, I had them horizontal, and that was because I want still water. Um, if it were a tumbling water, I would have sculpted my strokes the way that the water is tumbling and falling down. So, that's, that's it, phase one. So, you're first going to start by thoroughly, with probably a two inch brush, wetting your sky, adding your color, play with that any way you want to, and then dry brush down in your water, take some of that blue up onto your land, that's going to be a little bit of a, a shadow area once we cover that up with some yellows and greens later.